All right, so uh, before we start, uh, just uh, a uh, uh, disclaimer again that uh, today the, uh, the topic itself, we are not actually uh, giving you any investment advice, but actually this is uh, something that I shared to you because uh, we see that a lot of investors out there in the market, this is uh, what they think about uh, this topic, economies of uh, scales. So we can actually see from uh, two different perspectives. One is uh, from the entrepreneurs, but uh, also we can actually see this uh, topic from the investor point of view. So before we start, uh, just uh, talk, hey, how come got uh, <laughs> hand clap sound? Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so before we start, uh, we would like to talk about this concept three S uh, from uh, since that the establishment of uh, MCM until now, our founders are always talk about this three S, which is a uh, sustainability the scalability and also the social uh, impact to the market. And then we, this is uh, our philosophy when we actually look at uh, some projects, uh, we actually help the entrepreneurs to actually grow their business. But at the same time, we also have uh, lots of uh, investors when they invest in something. Normally, we we'll actually have uh, some guidance to guide us towards the direction that we want. So for example, like some of them don't have uh, any philosophy in the investment. So they will have tends to have uh, missed out their direction, loss of their direction. Then in the, up to the certain point, then they will start to asking they themselves, why I would I like to invest in this kind of, uh, uh, of a project or this kind of uh, investment. So the entrepreneur itself, they also will have the direction why they want to actually start out their business. So they will start with why. But from an MCM point of view, actually we'll start with why. There's a three things that we always talk about. First is a sustainability. So whether this company is sustainable or not, or is a already a sunset business. So this is the first thing. Second thing is a scalability. Whether today we invest or we actually we are involved in certain projects. So this project, whether they can scale or not, and whether they can grow to another level with their current resources. So that's a core scalability. And of course, the last thing, which is the most important part that we believe is a social impact. Whether you are actually giving a positive wipes to the market or the society, or actually you are uh, doing something which actually does harm more than good to the society. So that's uh, something we also ponder about when we actually start to actually involve in something like this. So this is a three, three S concept. Of course, there's a lots of uh, other points in the sustainability and also how to actually judge a company, whether it's a scalability. Later, I will talk about this uh, second point. But also the social impact itself is uh, equally important. Some people think that social impact is just to talk about the, the responsibility of a corporate. But no, it's uh, actually more than that. It's uh, more than uh, what we want to offer to the market. But at the same time, it will actually benefit to ourselves as well. Okay, so all these three parts will be uh, actually stated in this uh, book, which, which is a very good book. I encourage all of you to actually buy this book so that you can read through uh, what is a 3S, what is a business investment life cycle, what is a property investment life cycle, what is a happening right there, uh, out there in the market that actually can be benefiting us uh, because of uh, these uh, strategies that we are talking about. So we call it as uh, all you need to know about the investment, be it in the uh, real estate or be it in the business, right? Okay, so let us start the topic today. Our topic is uh, economies of scale. Uh, in a short term, so that everyone can understand that what is uh, EOS, it is referring to the cost advantage, which that helps you to actually increase your company's uh, scale of uh, production and become more efficient, uh, resulting in a decrease of uh, cost per unit. So this is an overall very basic idea of uh, economy of scale. But when I start to actually study this topic, I find out there's a lot of uh, interesting thing when it comes to the EOS, the economies of scale. Because uh, most of the time when we look at it, we are actually thinking of uh, we are sharing the resources among each and other department, or maybe we are using the same technology amongst uh, all other departments then we call it as an economic F scale. But when you start to drill into this topic, you'll find a lot of uh, very different, interesting topic, which later I will actually reveal more on that. So this is a very good graph, but later I will actually use this graph to talk about a lot of uh, concept about the EOS, the economics of scale. So the first 
the small firm that actually start up, normally they have a higher average of uh, cost. That's why during the startup, com the company actually have to sustain in order to survive at the higher average cost environment. And when this company, they starts to grow, they will have uh, more and more resources to help them to grow. And with this, they actually they will increase the output leads to a lower uh, average cost. So you'll see that most of a company, if let's say they go past the uh, that valley, which is uh, most startup, they have to face this challenge. If they go past that, most likely they will survive. Then they will have to actually start to scale to some other different uh, countries, different geographical area with the current resources they have. So these are basically the the um, what I call the graph that we are look at. So please remember this graph. Later we are actually use this graph to explain a few very interesting um, phenomenon. Okay, so uh, this is also one of the example that most of the people may actually think or might not uh, think of a bit. Uh, last time, very during the old days, when we want to actually transport something through the sea, sea route, maybe you have a very small boat like sampan. Then what you can do is actually you maybe you can actually carry a few boxes of the thing. But nowadays the the container systems or we call it as a co containerization. So it becomes so uh, advanced that actually with uh, just a short, uh, small ship itself, you can actually carry a lot of uh, things on it because it uh, actually is uh, uh, EOS of the spaces. Because uh, one, one ship, you can actually use the facility, you can use the workers on the ship, you can use the same uh, space to actually achieve a higher uh, loading of the uh, ship itself for you to actually uh, solve your logistic issue. So this is uh, one of uh, example, but also the very significant evolution of the grocery industry. You see that last time, old days, uh, 40 years ago, a lot of us actually buy something from the grocery shop. So it's a one very small shop and that there's uh, not much that you can do with a shop because uh, there's uh, not much thing that is selling there. So even you want to compare the price itself, there's not much for you to compare because the products that is uh, so limited. So what uh, normally our, old, our parents, what we do is uh, we go from shop to shop actually to do the comparison. So it is a, a lot of a waste of time. And also the space itself cannot allow you to actually put a lot of a thing there. So you see that the modern days, uh, when the hypermarket come in, then the price will, uh, will reduce significantly because uh, first of all, the space itself are uh, fully utilized and it's uh, more comfortable for you to actually uh, do the shopping over there in the hypermarket. But also at the same time, this hypermarket, when they actually get the suppliers to supply their products, they normally will purchase in the higher scale, uh, the bulk purchase. So the price of uh, the company itself will reduce tremendously. So when it compares to the independent grocer, so that has an advantage of economy of scale. And you will see the market cap of a Walmart during that time, the world richest person, the world richest family is from Sam Walton, which is from a Walmart. And currently, I just checked the resident price of a market cap is a 392 billion. It's still a very huge um, market cap. And they are the old time player in this uh, grocery industry. But uh, after during uh, 2000, after to 2000, there's another company coming out, which is Amazon. I believe uh, every one of us know. So Amazon also doing the same thing. They actually have a bulk purchase. So you see that uh, they should enjoy the same advantages compared to the Walmart. But you will notice that actually Amazon, they enjoy the further uh, discount from a certain other things. For example, the space issue, because uh, no matter how efficient you are in a Walmart, you still need the brick and mortar to help you to actually sell the product. And they have a limitation of a uh, geographical because uh, if let's say you want to come to KL to start up your, with your hypermarket, you need to look for the space. You go to Penang, you have to start up with your space. So the cost itself to build the warehouse or to build the hypermarket is uh, same everywhere. Of course, the land, land price, the rental is different, but the uh, business model is the same. But when it goes to the online grocer, actually the whole business concept is different. 
Yes, they still enjoy the bulk purchase uh, item with a very tremendous low price, but at the same time, they actually have the advantage in the selling the products from the fulfillment center. Then they send to the different part of uh, Malaysia, so for example. That's why it makes uh, Amazon can grow faster with, within a short period, but grow faster. And the market cap right now is 1.85 trillion. It's almost uh, three to four times of uh, Walmart. This same applies to a lot of a technology company. With a technology, you can actually enjoy the EOS further. And uh, uh, this one is uh, for the simple example. But when we look into a lot of the different type of a business, we will see that it become more and more complex because uh, when we say it's the economies of scale, most likely people will think of when you buy the product in a bigger scale, then it's a EOS, it's an economy of scale. But we put it into a same consideration that the more and more people actually will actually goes to buy from you, you are enjoying the um, the bonus of the clients, uh, so that, that's a point that uh, people will talk about. But if you look at it properly, there is uh, some business model actually even doing uh, a lot bigger than that. For example, they only target the fitness group of uh, people to sell them the fitness series of a product. So you have a fitness uh, demographic. Then when we actually talk about the gardening, then you have a, a, another group of people which is a very interested in gardening, interested in reading, interested in gaming, interested in cooking. So when you focus on this group of people, people alone, the company itself can be already be a very huge company. But there is another group of uh, company, type of a company which, is, uh, which do the diff thing differently. In the company itself, they have a full flash or full range of a product just to target that particular uh, group of uh, people. Like IKEA, you see that they have a gardening division. They have a kitchen division for the cooking. They also have uh, some of uh, product is uh, just uh, targeting for those who likes to read the library. So this kind of a company, they can actually scale even faster because of a uh, different segment alone can already scale by it itself. So it's a uh, scaling within a scalable entity, we, we call it as. And it seems goes to the Lazada. You notice that Lazada, when we talk about the product, is a marketplace. But when we talk about the product of a fitness, then there's a, a huge product range for the fitness. When we talk about the gaming, you have a gaming chair, you have a gaming um, equipment, you have a gaming table, you have a gaming, even they are selling the games itself online. So that is uh, what uh, Lazada can do. So the scalability is really, really high. And there's another different way of uh, looking into this model is uh, Udemy or maybe Teachable. Uh, there's a lot of uh, online e-learning platform that when people, they are so interested in gardening knowledge, they will go to uh, uh, this Udemy. They will actually start to search for the topic itself like uh, literature. That one is for reading or maybe gaming or maybe cooking. So that's a different topic. So this group, this type of a company like Udemy, they will actually start to build their community in different sectors, like the fitness sector, like the gardening sector, like the reading sector, like the gaming sector. That's a, a more complicated type of a model of a, a EOS. Yeah, and uh, next we are we're going even further up to use the technology to look at the whole industry. So when we are talking about the bug purchase, uh, like the human, uh, like the labor, you can actually use the same label to do the more different thing. So that is a lower end of uh, EOS. But when you up our game into the technology, into the AI, then it will make the thing become more interesting. Like uh, Google, they enjoy the most out of uh, EOS in this uh, amongst all of us. That's so why you see the market cap is uh, tremendous. We have uh, Apple, the, the highest uh, market cap uh, valuation in the company, in the history of the world. Uh, they hit the uh, 1 trillion a uh, few years back. And IBM, like Facebook, like Microsoft, uh, like Amazon. So you notice the same thing. They actually grow from nothing 
but they use their advantage in the EOS to actually start to build their, their business model until the level they have now. And you'll notice that they already have the, enjoy the advantages of uh, EOS in uh, uh, purchasing like the Amazon. Last time they can have a bulk purchase so they can reduce the price. But what is next? Then they actually implement this, uh, this uh, concept into their AWS, which is a web server. So later I'll talk about how they do it. And also Microsoft, the same thing, they actually start to do, do the, uh, apply the EOS in the technology level. But now what is the reason, the most advanced uh, technology they are actually focusing on is the AI. So you know that there is uh, one uh, we call as a partnership on AI. So this group of uh, people, they are actually the most advanced company that apply the AI in the market. So in order for them to actually make this become a sustainable business model, they have to group together in order to achieve the EOS in the AI. For example, like if let's say one company, they start to do this uh, AI by they themselves alone, they cannot actually first share the resources which may actually help uh, each other. So they have the, uh, the mutual benefits with each other, but you do it alone, you cannot enjoy the EOS. Same thing happens to the um, talents itself. So the talent pool in US is uh, one of the uh, most advanced talent pool that uh, people talk about. But, but when it goes out of the US, so you can't enjoy that kind of uh, advantage at all. So the AI itself is uh, one of the latest string trend in the EOI, EOS, not EOI. Eh? How the world most valuable company by a wide margin benefited from an economies of uh, scale. Of course, their base is uh, one of their largest uh, EOS benefit that they get from. Because uh, uh, do you know that uh, Apple every quarter they are selling more than 10 million sets of their mobile phone, their smartphone. So this is a tremendous. So the first uh, economics of circle is they can actually purchase the components of a mobile phone, like the screen, like the, uh, the uh, processors at a big scale at a cheaper price. So they can actually reduce their, uh, their pricing from there. But do you know that actually they also enjoy EOS because of their, their app store? Because on the app store is an ecosystem. A lot of our developer, they will definitely develop something actually they will put there. So the more variety will attract the more people who will actually join into a single store. So you will enjoy another scaling to scale up in the next level. Okay, that's why how the Apple actually scale up their business. And uh, Amazon just now remember that we are talking about the uh, AWS, the web server online. So actually how they actually benefits on this is because uh, every server that they use they actually they purchase, they are not purchasing uh, off the shelf a uh, complete set of a server. They actually buy the with a minimum spec with uh, unnecessary components all removed. Then they will move to their server room, uh, server uh, center. Then will they, they will actually do the uh, assemble by day themselves. So they will have already reduced a loss of uh, unnecessary part uh, from there. So this is uh, what actually Amazon told the people out there that how they can actually afford to uh, maintain such an uh, advanced uh, server system, server center, but at the same time offer a quite an affordable pri price to the people out there. But it's provided the more people use their server, then the more they can enjoy this kind of a benefit. And also, I will talk about another very special case study of, uh, of the Starbucks. We all know that Starbucks is the world's largest uh, coffee house chain in, uh, at the moment. And uh, a lot of people think that uh, they actually make a lot of uh, money from the uh, coffee itself. But actually, they enjoy the most of the uh, EOS from the actually unit, the property itself. Now, for example, today, there is uh, one um, coffee shop, they want to open their point at the new shopping mall. Do you know that their rental will be very, very low? Or sometimes they can enjoy free rental because they themselves have a lot of a client, customers or supporters that will actually come to buy a coffee from them. So because of this, they can uh, 
leverage on the, what we call the ripple of effect to actually affect the people, the, their customer to come to their shop at the same time, visit that store or visit their shopping mall. So this is how they actually leverage it. Okay, so there's uh, of course a uh, lot of uh, different type of, uh, of uh, economy of scale. I will talk about only three today because uh, most likely one, two, three is the same. Basically, it's the same. It's referring to, to the technical. If you have a technology or, or if you have an equipment that can support certain uh, range of uh, a certain range of a production. So when the production increase, then your technical uh, supports your technical uh, resources will actually support the scalability. So this is the first type of, uh, of the scalability. Second one is uh, I mentioned just now, so I don't need to actually explain more, is the lower average cost of uh, buying large quantity. So this is uh, done by uh, Amazon and a lot of uh, people who sell the things. Normally the company who sell the things in the large quantity, they will actually enjoy this. The finally, that is uh, also one we call it a financial scalability. Financial scalability, like for example, imagine that today you are uh, large enough that when you get the loan from the bank, the bank sees that your company is cash rich, your company have a very healthy kind of uh, income, cash flow, and also the company has the very large customer base. All this can actually help you to scale up and the finance, uh, fi financially, the bank actually allow you to actually uh, get a uh, better loan uh, loan terms and also the quantity of uh, the amount of uh, finance and also the risk itself the bigger the company actually they can stand a better chance of uh, facing the risk so you will see a lot most of the time the small company uh, during the pandemic or during the certain crisis they will be the first one to actually to collapse but most of the company I say most not every company, but those companies who have a bad cash flow, then they still actually face the same issue. But those companies is large enough, they can actually enjoy the uh, risk bearing on this EOS. And the last part is the external, which is uncontrollable, like in certain industry. If let's say you are at the right industry, you are always enjoy the EOS. Okay. And uh, these are the six benefits of uh, economic of uh, scales. Uh, first is uh, reduce the long-term unit cost. Uh, second is uh, increase the profit. The third is uh, you actually make your company, you expand your company faster and uh, larger and even into the different countries. Okay, but the number four, five, six is uh, down to the individual level. Uh, for example, when we want to actually, we as a consumable, uh, con consumer, we want to buy something because of uh, uh, the company, they themselves enjoy the EOS. Then, as a consumer, we can buy something which is cheaper. All right. Like for example, like last time we have, uh, we have the cassette. We can uh, use the cassette to actually play the music. So when the cassette actually introduced uh, into the world or VCR introduced to the world, because the quantity is so slow, uh, so low. So the price of the technology itself is very, very expensive. So when actually it flood to the market, it become more and more popular. So the price of the unit become cheaper and cheaper. So it's a cycle that the cheaper it is, the more people will use it. The more people they use it, the cheaper it is. So it's a actually good uh, response from the market. And the product improvement also, because uh, they enjoy the uh, economies of scale. So the manufacturer will tend to actually improve their quality. So we will actually enjoy the better quality of our products. And down to the staff level, we will see that the bigger company, why they can actually have a better salary because they actually enjoy the better scalability and better um, uh, benefits in the company itself. Like for example, uh, the staff, they can enjoy certain benefit due to because the company is uh, large enough, then they can afford to actually buy uh, uh, subscribe to certain type of uh, benefits can benefit everyone of uh, the staff. Okay, um, since I have uh, not much time, I will go through faster on this. So why the developers can always enjoy the uh, economies of scale? You'll notice that uh, actually developer will always enjoy in different terms 
uh, when we talk about the scalability, there is a lot of uh, different type of uh, scalability, but the developer can actually enjoy most of it. Like for example, today we want to build a house. You need to hire someone, the builder. You want to buy the materials. You want to buy that piece of uh, land because you are solo, you are alone. So when you engage with the builder alone, the builder definitely will be more expensive compared to the developer because the developer is a building in scale. Secondly, is a building material. Unless you are about purchase to build 100 units of houses, if not, you actually get the material become very, very expensive. But the developer, when they get from the supplier, they can actually have a term to actually purchase, not maybe not only one project, maybe three to four projects, so they can actually reduce their price further. And the third one, of course, is uh, when we talk about the land, small piece of land. And if I say you buy a huge piece of land, they can actually do a lot of things on that piece of uh, land, like for example, lay the infrastructure to do the title conversion. All these actually will enjoy the economies of scale as well. Okay, so uh, uh, like labor, like even the technology, how they build the units, how they build the property itself, the technology itself is uh, one of the advantage. And even the marketing, of course, uh, uh, personal level, we don't need to market. Maybe we actually build it, then we actually use it. We, we are the owner, so we stay in it. But for the developer, the bigger the scale, actually the marketing is still the same. There's even the scale model, we can want, use one scale model to represent the whole project already. So that's uh, also part of it. Of course, they have the financial that I mentioned just now. All right, now there's uh, one interesting part I would like to talk to you. So why economies of scale isn't always work? It actually depends on where are you. If let's say you are a startup, most likely you will actually enjoy the economy and scale. For example, if let's say you are at a very early stage, the small firm, yes, they have a higher, higher average of cost. Then they have a lot of uh, things for them to implement. They will start to actually implement one by one and grow from that. So sometimes it's easier for them to enjoy this uh, EOS growth compared to the company who is uh, large enough. You will see that the line itself, why the EOS rate is uh, at the black color, but why not that it will forever reduce until it becomes a zero? Because there's a loss of uh, cost itself is a fixed cost. You will forever can't eliminate, for example, like uh, uh, Walmart, they have the rental, the rental itself, they can't be zero because they have to actually pay for the rental. They have to pay for a certain amount of uh, utility bills, the wages for their staff, so they can't avoid that. So they can improve their efficiency, but they cannot avoid that. But the small company, yes, when the amount is uh, become bigger, then they can start to enjoy this uh, gap. Right? Secondly, why some of a company actually, they not only they were stagnant at a certain point, but sometimes after a certain sweet spot, their cost itself will escalate again, like the green color. It will grow up again. That is because there's a lot of the thing that we always need to do it in balance. We don't overdo it, but we have to do it in balance. And there's a few disadvantage of our EOS that actually prove that if let's say you don't handle it well, then your cost will actually not reduce, but actually it will escalate again. Like first is a poor communication. You imagine that the fewer staff can do more things, that's a scalability. But if let's say the scale, the scalability actually grows beyond what they can do, then they will start to encounter a lot of mismanagement, uh, poor communication, and uh, they can't control uh, whatever, like the purchasing, they can't control anymore because there are too many things for them to focus in. They can't focus it. And uh, sometimes they will overdo and uh, duplicate what effort they do. So all, all this actually will happen for especially the big company. So that's why some of the uh, entrepreneurs say that last time they worked in the huge company, MNC company, they see that there is this problem, that problem. Then they want to start up their company so that they can control that's a reason because the smaller the company, you can control even better. The big company, they need to use the system to actually control in order for, uh, for them to control the wastage because of uh, scalability. And uh, of course, a uh, big moral because too big already, sometimes uh, is uh, the, the boss cannot actually focus individual. So they feel that they are just like one part of a group of a very huge company. So some of them actually lost their moral. 
And uh, last is the uh, external opposition that uh, you have to actually not only facing the internally, you also have to actually face the people out there. So the more you actually op you have the output, so sometimes it will magnify in the market. If I say you don't handle the small thing properly, it will actually become the avalanche, it become a big problem for the company. Okay, and now from the investor point of view, this is my last, last slide. So if I'm an investor, so since like the Amazon is the one of a company actually enjoy the most of a EOS, then I should invest in the Amazon, am I right? So if you invest in the Amazon, it's not because of they actually have the room to grow in, in the EOS. Just like I said, they're already stagnant for the EOS. Maybe they need to implement some other technology like just now I have uh, gave uh, some hints to you that they are right now actually going towards the AI direction. So AI may be the game changer for them to, in order for them to grow further. So AI will replace a lot of their labor, a lot of their planning, and they can actually shorten the period for them to actually do the, some execution of their campaign. So that's the EOS that they may enjoy. But if let's say you talk about the bug purchase kind of a thing, so those company already way over that, uh, that um, we call that uh, efficiency. They already enjoyed those efficiency way back uh, 10 years ago and 15 years ago. So they will no longer have that kind of advantage anymore. So if you are looking into some company you want to invest, so either you are looking at uh, some other area that they would like to actually leverage on or those companies who still start to actually benefit from this uh, EOS. Of course, those uh, EOS is already proven that, that by the big boys. Now these are uh, small company, they are growing. So you enjoy more profits. The company will enjoy more profits from this part because uh, whatever they save is their profit because it's translated to their profit. So uh, I repeat, uh, whatever saving that they made is, will be translated to the profit that they earn. So profit itself is directly related to, of course, the valuation of a company, of this uh, public listed company. So it will direct translate to the market capitalization. That's why we always say that as an investor, we always need to know what is their strength, what is the room for them to grow. And when we talk about the room to grow, the first thing we want to see is whether they can be scaled or not. So of course, I have to repeat again, all this information will be actually stated clearly inside the book that just now we mentioned. So you can purchase the book to actually understand more. So that's uh, what I would like to share to you today. Thank you very much.